Okay, we have to another integral. This one's from the UK integration B 2024, number 12. We have the integral from zero to one, sine natural log x minus natural log x over natural log x squared dx. Okay, at first I wasn't really sure how this is gonna work. The only thing I've got going here is, one clear thing is we've got natural log x everywhere. So I'm thinking a u substitution can clean it up, but I think it might actually work better instead of substituting just u for ln x, a lot of times it's kind of nice to do u for minus ln x. So doing this, let's first isolate, um, let's solve for x. So just first of all, moving the minus sign, multiplying by minus one on both sides, we have natural log x equals minus u. Solve for x with log properties, we get x equal to e minus u. Then we'll take a derivative on it. For our dx value, we just have minus e minus u du. Next, let's go ahead and substitute on it. First, I'll plug in one. Natural log of one is just zero. Plug in zero, natural log at zero, that's going to minus infinity, but the minus sign in front fixes it. Now we're going to positive infinity. So now coming to this, for our natural log x, for all these natural log x's, we're now using minus u. So just kind of writing it in, we're gonna have sine minus u minus, this here becomes a minus u, just doing it out carefully. This is going to be minus u squared. And then for our dx value, we have all this stuff, minus e minus u du. Now what I want to do first is let's take this minus sign here and use it to flip the bounds around just to get the infinity on top. So we'll get rid of this and flip the order on the bounds. Now minus when we square it, that becomes a plus and doesn't matter. Here in the numerator, minus times minus is plus. Use the fact that sine is an odd function to take the minus out front. So we'll just get rid of that, bring a minus here. And then I think I'll just reorder the numerator to make it pretty. So we'll just write it as u minus sine u. And now here with this cleaned up version of the integral, I think it's pretty well set up for Feynman's trick on it because you know we're going to infinity here, but now we've got this e to the minus u. We can parameterize it over here, creating a parameter in the exponent. And we know that when u is going to infinity, the whole thing's gonna be going off to zero. So we're gonna have our convergence on this. So let's see how this is gonna work. If I create some parameter on this s, okay, and we rewrite this, I'll bring this, I'm gonna bring this to the front because that's where we're putting the parameter. And so let's create the s on it like, so let's create the s in the exponent like e to the minus su here. And then let's bring down all this junk over here. And then now that we have this set up, we have to keep in mind, like we don't wanna change the problem. We've introduced this parameter S. In order to go later on, we're going to get back to a solution. This is gonna be the same thing as just F of one. You just plug in a one for S, you get back the same thing. So this is gonna be our way back. But the other thing I'm gonna want is a value for later on that we can evaluate. I just mentioned briefly that when S is infinity, the exponential is gonna be going off to zero fast. So we're gonna have this value that we can use. I know this is not really good notation. When I say this, I mean this as a limit, like as u is approaching infinity, then the whole thing's going to zero. So we'll come back and use this later on. And then from here, let's go ahead and differentiate here with respect to s. Using Feynman's trick on it, what I'm gonna do is we'll differentiate as a partial inside the integral sign. So this is gonna look like d, I always have a hard time, I have a hard time drawing my curly s's for the partial, but anyway, all this stuff over here is gonna be a constant. This stuff here is a constant with respect to S. So we really only have to worry about differentiating this part right here, and then we'll leave all this stuff out over here. So when we do this, go ahead and differentiate. What's gonna happen, derivative of this is just gonna be the same thing, E minus SU. But then we need chain rule on the exponent here with respect to S. So what's gonna happen is a minus U is gonna pop out, and then we still have all this other stuff. But then I can cancel u with one of these. I could take this minus sign and use it to flip the, flip the sign on this part right here. And then now all I want to do is let's split this up into two integrals on this plus sign, just distributing in the e minus su. So let's just rewrite and see what all this looks like. But now over here in the second integral, we just have u over u. Of course, I can cancel that and we just have a one now. But now at this point, we've got two integrals that we can do. I mean, this one's really straightforward, but in each case, we could think of these as a Laplace transform. This right here is gonna be the same thing as the Laplace transform of sine u over u. 
And this over here, our input on the Laplace transform is just one. This is just gonna be the Laplace transform of one. We have a formula for that. This is gonna be the same thing as just one over S. But now for this Laplace transform over here, we can use a formula as well. I've done this quite a few times. I've done this two or three times. And I actually have a video on just this Laplace transform. So I'll provide a link to this video in the Laplace transform playlist if you're not familiar with Laplace transforms. But for this one, we'll just use the formula on this. This is gonna be the same thing. For this first one, this is gonna be pi over two minus arctan of s, and then we have this part minus one over s. So now here we've got our value for f prime of s. Let's clean up the board and we'll use this and continue. All right, now at this point, we just need to remember what we're doing. We wanna go kind of this arrow here. We wanna go backwards. We wanna get f prime of s. We wanna get back to our f of s in order to get our goal. This is gonna be our solution, f of one. So all I need to do to get our f of s value is just let's integrate on both sides with respect to s, integrate here with respect to s. Well, part of this here is gonna be easy. Pi over two is a constant. So integrating that part, we're gonna have pi over two times s because we're just integrating one. Let's skip this for a second. We integrate this, we get minus natural log of s. Drop the absolute value because we're gonna assume, we wanna assume positive s. Then let me just add a plus C in here, but we have this other part we wanna deal with. We, need to, we still need to integrate arc 10 of S ds. Let's see if we can do this integral really quick, just using integration by parts, kind of create a one in here, and I'll squeeze in the uh, di method up here. So when we do this, let's differentiate arc 10 S and integrate one. So put that in here. We will, then let's differentiate it once. That's gonna be one over s squared plus one, integrate this, and we just get an s. So we get part of our solution right here, but now we've got another integral to do. Well, this is gonna be a really easy integral. Let me see if I can just do that really quick. It's like one integral is leading to another, to another, but I feel like I'm kind of obligated to do them. So let's do the integral. So here we're just gonna have s over s squared plus one. If I multiply them by a two, multiply by half here, then we'll just kind of do the substitution in our head because we've got the whole derivative in the numerator, like if I made this a t substitution, then our dt is right here. So then what's gonna happen with this is this is just gonna become natural log s squared plus one, and we'll just do it over two. So now we just need to take what we found here, what we found here, and plug it back in and see what we have. This is all, we're, we're all leading up, we're trying to get our f of s part of this. So, so now let's just copy everything down. We'll have pi over two s minus natural log of s, Let's leave the plus C for a second. Distribute the minus sign into this first part. So we have minus S arctan of S. And then on this right here, we have minus times minus is plus. So we just can take this exactly as it is. So we'll have plus this part, one half ln S squared plus one. Let me write this. I'm gonna bring the one half into the exponent and write it as ln square root S squared plus one plus C on there. Now let me do a little cleanup on this. What I wanna do here is Let's factor an S out of this part. So we're gonna have, I'll write this as S pi over two minus arctan of S. And then here and here, let's just use, let's use log properties on it to combine that into one expression. So this becomes natural log square root S squared plus one over S plus C. And so now this is gonna be our F of S value I just don't like having the plus C in there because ultimately we need to evaluate it to an exact solution. So let's clean it up and just find the value for plus C and then we can finish it off. Now from here, in order to deal with our, we want our plus C value and this is our F of S. Well, then we go back and we're gonna use this condition we created all the way at the beginning of the video. So we'll just plug in infinity again, thinking about this as a limit, then what's gonna happen and actually, because this is a bit complicated, let's actually do this. Let's say this is gonna be a limit as S is going to infinity of all this stuff. And we're saying this whole expression needs to be equal to zero from what we found earlier. Now this part's gonna be easy because that plus one, when we're going to infinity, that plus one's not gonna do anything. So it's gonna be like S over S. This part here is going to one, natural log of one is going to zero. So this part is approaching zero. We don't have to worry about that. Now this part's a little more complicated because you'll notice here our s value is going to infinity. Arctan when s is going to infinity, this part is going to pi over two. So then what happens, pi over two minus pi over two, this part's zero. So what we end up with is infinity times zero, which is an indeterminate form. 
Now, a lot of times when you get the situation, it's tempting to just be like, well, it's zero or it's infinity or whatever. But actually, I think we need to do this out a little more carefully using L'Hopital's rule. So what's gonna happen on it? In order to do L'Hopital's rule on it, I need to turn this into a fraction. So I'm gonna bring, we'll bring the one over, we'll bring the S into the denominator and write it as one over S. And then we'll leave this part in the numerator. And then all we're gonna do is take derivatives and evaluate again. So this one over S becomes minus one over S squared. Pi over two becomes zero. Derivative of arctan is one over S squared plus one. Minuses cancel. So then I can just flip this fraction over and bring it up into the numerator. But then for this limit here, the one's not really doing anything. This limit is gonna be just one. So what we can do is say all this stuff here is going to one, and then we've got a little equation. We've got one, this zero is gone. So we're saying one plus C equals zero. Solve for C, that means our C value needs to be minus one. We'll take this and we'll plug this back in here. And this is gonna be our value for F of S. Okay, now at this point it feels like a two hour video, but let's see if we can finish it off here. We've got our F of S value. Now all we need to do is plug in, get back to our goal right there. We just need to find F of one. So F of one, we're just plugging in one in front. We have pi over two minus just arctan of one plus this part, we're gonna have natural log one squared plus one is gonna be two. This is gonna become natural log two, but so we just have one in the denominator, that's going away. And then we have this minus one on the end. Arctan at one is just pi over four. For pi over two, to get a common denominator on this, pi over two I can write as two pi over four minus pi over four. Putting this all together for my final solution, we just get pi over four plus natural log square root of two minus one, and that's it. Okay, so there you have it. Good one today, UK 2024. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.